Happy New Year, Indie Game fans! I hope that you enjoyed all 300 videos in 2021. So to kick us off for the new year, here's a list of awesome hidden gems to check out while we wait for the new games of 2022, where the criteria is an arbitrarily decided less than 1,000 reviews on Steam. So while the Steam Winter Sale is still going on, be sure to pick up games of interest at a discount if you can. Let's begin with Mighty Goose, a pixel art run and gun action platformer that is tremendously underrated. This, of course, reminds me very strongly of Metal Slug, having the same fantastic feeling action, giant bosses, and even vehicles to get in. While the popularity of Untitled Goose Game didn't quite rub off on this one, the pure action in this with a variety of weapons and enemies was simply a joy, where you play as our legendary hero hunting down the Void King in order to stop his intergalactic conquest. As such, if you're a fan of the classic series and have been hankering for more, this is a great indie title to pick up, so let loose the goose if you have not. We have a number of cozy and charming games in this video, beginning with Luna's Fishing Garden, a pixel art fishing and farming title that has you catching fish and building out your own garden. This is a relatively stress-free experience other than the actual fishing portion, where the gameplay loop is pretty compelling as you catch and sell fish to grow your garden, with some pleasant visuals that will allow you to chill out. You might be beginning to see a trend here with our next title in Beard Blade, a long in development 2D side scrolling action platformer that is very classic and well made, but perhaps does not push the genre too far forward. You play as a man with a powerful shape shifting beard, which can be used in combat, traversal, and more, as he chases after a crew of pirates who have stolen his livestock fighting his way through a strange island filled with deadly enemies. I really love the look and animation of this game, which reminds me of 16-bit classics with a share of collectibles and secrets as well. So if you grew up in that era and are looking for a nostalgia hit, be sure to get this. I love my farming sims, but if you wanted a little bit more action in your game, perhaps Guitaria Fables will be of interest given that this combines Stardew Valley style farming with a Zelda style action adventure game. The animal characters are pretty cute, with it giving me some fantasy life vibes from the 3DS. I've certainly seen some of the monster assets in this game used in other titles before, so it is not exactly wholly original, but things are placed in appropriate areas such that some thought has gone into this and is not a mess of a game, making it a neat title worth a play. I absolutely love the idea and concept of The Ramp, a self-described digital toy that is not constrained by the boundaries of what defines a traditional game, without timers, scores, missions, and so on. It's a flow game, much like XO1 mentioned a couple of videos back, where you simply become one with the game, so I certainly hope to see more of such games in the future. A title from last January is Oliya, one that people may have forgotten about, so I'm here to give you a little reminder. You play as a man building a legendary harpoon trapped behind enemy lines as he fights his way to get home. It comes to us from developer Skeleton Crew Studio, who is based in Japan, which gives the game a little bit of a different feel. And while it does have pixel art, I'm not the biggest fan of the look and colours used here. Still, a neat little action title with some light puzzle elements that's worth a play. 
A no-brainer pick if you're a 90s kid is Kaze and the Wild Masks, a 2D side-scrolling platformer that is paying tribute to the classics from that era, being very similar to Donkey Kong Country with a touch of Sonic as well. Simply being a well-made entry, but again, perhaps doesn't exactly innovate in the space. One title from way back in January 2021 is Ocean's Heart, a Zelda-style action-adventure title where you play as a woman, travelling the world searching for her missing father. The exploration, action and puzzles are pretty much a Zelda game, but does add in some more modern elements like crafting, but if you're a fan of this genre like me, it's a pretty good title which has gone under the radar. We have had a number of 3D platformers released in recent months to make success, but one of the coziest, most heartwarming entries is Here Comes Nico. This has you interning for a frog for a role as a professional friend where you travel about the islands simply trying to help everyone, collecting items, catching fish, playing games and more. Video games are a good way of relaxing and chilling out, so if you're in the mood for some cozy vibes, you cannot get much better than this. I think that it is absolutely criminal that Stonefly is as underrated as it is, since this action adventure title is pretty good, having a unique world and setting, super sweet gameplay, sick customizable mechs and a fantastic art style coming to us from the developer of the similarly stylized creature in the well, but for some reason has just 65 reviews on Steam. It has you attempting to recover a stolen family heirloom, giving chase in a fully customizable buck mech that I think looks fantastic. The combat is very interesting, being king of the hill-like in nature, where you stand your ground and knock enemies off the edge of the battlefield, which makes it unique and worth a play. A mini trend from 2021 is the rise of fishing-focused live sim titles alongside the more traditional Stardew Valley or Harvest Moon-like farming games with Moon Glow Bay being the title of interest here. You travel out to sea with your stock of bait and lures, attempting to catch a variety of fish to both cook and eat as well as to stock up in the local aquarium. This is in the larger context of restoring a fractured community, which, combined with the swelling music, is simply one of the more heartwarming and emotional experiences of the year.
do note that the mouse and keyboard controls are pretty bad for a game on Steam, so a controller is certainly recommended, but a minor issue for a great game. Photography games have seen somewhat of a comeback as well, with titles like Pokemon Snap, Umurangi Generation and Penko Park leading the way, where the best of last year is Toem, a super adorable title that has you simply taking your grandmother's camera, exploring the world and helping out the various characters while you go on an adventure. The switch to the first-person perspective in this semi-3D world is very neat, with some hidden details that you cannot see from the overworld view which makes exploration a joy, but a variety of missions to complete does include some very cleverly designed ones as well. <laughs> Another long in development Kickstarter title that made it to launch is the pixel art action platformer Steel Assault, looking like some long lost 16 bit title that plays pretty much how you would expect it to. You play as a resistant soldier, battling against a dictator and his army of goons, but where there is a very interesting twist is that our hero has access to a zipline of all things. There's bits of Gunstar Heroes, Metal Slug and Contra in this, all with a fantastic pixel art look and is tremendously underrated, at least based on the number of steep reviews, but do note that it is a shorter experience but is worth it for the entertainment value alone. Our final cozy title on the list is Garden Story, one that combines Zelda-style action-adventure combat with gardening mechanics, all with one of the cutest art styles that I have ever seen. We're looking at the trailer for its latest update for Autumn, which added more content, and as with most farming games, might have more seasonal updates to come as well. If you love roguelites and have not gotten Metallic Child, I would recommend that you get this title from a Korean developer whose previous work includes Smashing the Battle, but this game looks and feels similar with the 3D graphics from a top-down perspective. You play as an android, fighting against the other creations of her creator, the so-called metallic children, in a manner similar to Mega Man in more ways than one, even having you gain new abilities once you defeat a boss. As such, the action and weapon variety is fantastic, with a good look and theme as well, making this of interest to fans of the genre. Let's kick off the top 10 with Flynn, Son of Crimson, a title that I've been looking forward to for a very long time, and while it finally did release, it wasn't quite what I was expecting, not bad by any means, but perhaps just good instead of great.
This has you playing as the titular character who has to awaken the power of Crimson within him to stop an encroaching darkness. But with your trusty wolf dog by your side, things are perhaps not as dire as they seem. Of course, I absolutely love the pixel art in this game, but apparently this changed from a metroidvania to a level based action platformer which took some steam out of the release in my opinion. But the combo focused action is pretty good, has a decent upgrade and progression system and some challenging bosses as well, so a title that I certainly recommend. One of the most stylized first-person shooters of interest is Boomerang X, one where you wield a mystical glaive boomerang, using it to destroy your enemies in acrobatic combat. The action here is the highlight, where in addition to throwing the boomerang, you can even slingshot yourself to it in midair, preserving momentum and speed, which is so very satisfying once mastered with a nice variety of enemies and some cool environments and art as well. I'm actually pretty happy about where Archvale ended up, since despite it being a December release, it seems to have sold pretty well and is well deserved for this action-adventure bullet hell entry. This game is essentially Zelda crossed with Enter the Gungeon but is not a roguelite, where you are adventuring in various dungeons and defeating massive bosses, all while getting loot, crafting and upgrading them, and getting badges which act as the perk system that is similar to that of Hollow Knight. Again, it's another pixel art entry which I love the look of, showcasing how timeless and great pixel art can look, since this should easily hold up 5 or 10 years from now in terms of visuals. Since December is a busy month, this is one title that you might have missed, so if you did, be sure to get this. Among the long in development, highly anticipated titles of the year, one that many people were excited about was Narita Boy, a 2D action platformer that looks gorgeous, but again, has a similar fate to many other titles on the list. This is set in an almost Ready Player One style digital kingdom which is very 80s, telling a very meta story where you play as Narita Boy, the legendary video game character in this world where an entity known as him has returned, deleting the creator's memories which has caused Motherboard and her agents to activate the Narita Boy protocol. Needless to say, this game has one of the most gorgeous pixel art, although it is obscured a little by the CRT filter, but I suppose that is appropriate for the setting and the vibe that the developer is going for. Combat is a highlight, with some powerful abilities and tactical depth with things like dodges, with again, this being pretty underrated, so check it out if you have not. Name? My name is Fox. Jesse Fox. You don't seem to be Russian. Russian? Me? You were piloting a Russian aircraft two hours ago. I also drive a Toyota, and I'm not Japanese. Jesse Fox is a man of action. I'm just a man who's good at what he does. Humor is difficult to get right in games, but the deadpan delivery and the sheer absurdity of Unmetal did put a smile on my face in 2021. This is a stealth action game that parodies Metal Gear Solid, where you play as a stereotypical super soldier spy type that finds himself in ridiculous situations, having to escape an enemy military base which is where our adventure begins. There is the expected ridiculousness of stealth games like Hitman, where throwing a coin will attract the attention of an enemy soldier for example, with some light combat and adventure game or puzzle elements, but the highlight has to be the writing and voice acting. It does also come to us from developer An Epic Friend, best known for the metroidvanias, An Epic, Ghost 1.0 and Mini Ghost, so to see their talents applied to another genre which works surprisingly well is a treat. 
bit of imagination, anything is possible. Jesse Fox is the ultimate non-hero that we deserve. Hi. You stole a one-eyed man's patch? What you did was macabre and suggest you might have a fetish. Pet the doggy? <laughs> the sewer was infested with assassin rats. Felt like I was a huge chunk of cheese. Bless you. Fox, what are you waiting for? We are running out of time. You are Jesse Fox. No. I'm Jesse Fox. Will you try again? The poison. It's coming from this tower. We must save the village. Another very underrated, very classic title is Estelon Tears of the Earth one with metroidvania-like elements, where you play as a party of three adventurers exploring a mysterious tower that appeared suddenly in a desert near your village. In order for us to survive, I had to embrace death. The pixel art and action is classic and on point, resembling Elwa's Awakening quite a bit, so it's another nostalgia-laden entry. A title that many of you pointed out in my Game of the Year video is Unsighted, a pixel art action-adventure title that has quite an interesting focus on the in-game timer. You play as an automaton, seeking out other sources of energy known as Anima, which gives automatons sentience, where running out turns them into the Unsighted, mindless, hulking, robotic monstrosities. So this gets very interesting, where even in conversations with NPC vendors, the game's in-game timer is prominently displayed. The action and combat is great, with both melee and ranged weapon options, but the constant timer does add a sense of pressure to this game, which brings me to my, and perhaps many others, sticking points with this game. The constant timer, while neat, does result in a certain level of stress or anxiety, and while some people do seek out the challenge of a Soulsborne game, a timer does seem to turn many people off, which is perhaps why this is more of a hidden gem. But for something so critical to the design of this game to be that divisive, makes this worth a play for that aspect alone. I don't care much for traditional sports games, especially if they are simulation or manager focused, but a title that is basically a shonen anime is Dodgeball Academia, one where you finally make it to a school that focuses on dodgeball, having to train in order to become the best dodgeball team there ever was. The art is cartoony and great, with some impressive RPG and leveling systems which is combined with an atypical spot at its core, which makes the gameplay feel fresh, even more so when special abilities come into the mix. As such, it is truly very underrated, given how great this game is, so anime fans, you know what to do. A spooky title from October that is a must-play for roguelite fans is Dead Estate, one where you find yourself seeking shelter in a mysterious mansion in the middle of a storm, only for you to then realise that you're trapped and the mansion is filled with monsters, thus you have to fight your way out. The isometric pixel art look is a nice change from the Binding of Isaac style top-down look, with great action, 8 playable characters and an awesome theme that was perfect for October. It has certainly gone a little under the radar as compared to some giants in the space, but all things being said, it's doing pretty well for itself, making this a cannot miss. I just covered Prunty Fishy Adventure in my video of the best indie games of November, and I'm not kidding since this underwater metroidvania is excellent and has certainly gone under the radar much like a submarine. 
the underwater traversal and movement, surprisingly, feels pretty good and is not your run-of-the-mill garbage underwater level in games with fantastic tense combat with the javelin fish as well as some awesome mutant sea creatures for bosses, the designs of which are pretty monstrous and awe-inspiring. It might be another casualty of its release date in late November, which makes this take the number one spot. For more of the best of 2021 or for a look into 2022, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.